My name is James Williams Jr. This is Kung Fu Havoc number two, and this is the second part of the video about basically getting you guys up to speed one more time. It is Independence Day, by the way, so when this airs, God only knows because we don't currently have the internet at the moment. So I'm going to put this as politely as possible. When I was first told about my hip replacement, it took me and my father completely by surprise. And, you know, it was, it was just, like, really odd that the doctors missed this while I was enlisted because they gave me x-rays, they gave me bone scans, and they couldn't find anything. But they didn't really give me an MRI. And then I got specialists and stuff from McGuire to look at me. And it's like, son, we have bad news, we have worse news, and we have good news. So I'm like, okay, well, Give me the worst news first, and then give me the bad news, and then give me the good news. So the doctor looked at me, and my dad was in the room, you know, and my, my dad is a very sensitive man. I love my dad, and I miss my dad. And the doctors looked at me and said, Mr. Williams, and Father, the worst news that I can tell you is that your hip is totally fracked up. And you need to have a hip replacement like yesterday. Because if you don't, you're going to de be completely deformed. Now, the bad news is, we won't operate on you until you get your teeth fixed. Because we don't want to kill you on the table with the infection. And the surgery could be anywhere between 9, 12, to 13 hours long. And we want to make sure we get you fixed right. So my dad breaks down and crying. I'm like, well, Dad, why are you crying? He's like, because you're only 40 years old. Well, you're not even 40 years old. I forgot. I only had the surgery for a year. So I think I had it before I was 40. He's like, you're not, you're not, even, you're not even 42 years old yet. And you're going through all this. I was like, well, Dad, you know, I'm the idiot that wanted to go to the Army. It's like, yeah, and you had your reasons for that. But still, you know, you're a little young to be getting that. It's like, well, you know, I'm 42. I'm not that young. It's like, yeah, but your life's still productive and you can still do things and they're telling you that if you don't have the surgery you're going to be deformed for the rest of your life and then you won't be able to do things and he took it real hard you know and I didn't take it that hard until the doctor told me that they wouldn't operate until I had my teeth fixed and I was like well what the fuck does my teeth have to do with my ass it's like well you know to be honest with you if you don't get your teeth fixed you could die on the table my dad didn't need to hear that shit and it didn't really affect me. You know, it affected him, but it didn't really affect me. And he's like, okay, so what's our next step? He said, well, we can set you up for surgery in December. I was like, well, I don't want to ruin anybody's Christmas. Hey, look, man, you don't have a choice. You know, if you don't have the surgery, you're going to be fucked up. If you don't get the surgery on your teeth and you do have the surgery, your ass is going to die. So it was kind of like a, you know, win-lose situation. You know, if I don't have the surgery, I'm going to be deformed. I'll be in a wheelchair. I'll never drive again. You know, I might never walk right again. And the funny thing is, the only thing that was hurting me was my knee. It's like, yeah, see, you weren't wired properly. When God designed you, he made you special. So your, your leg, your knee, your hip, all that stuff's wired incorrectly. And there's nothing we can really do about it except for fix your hip. And so they did that. And in the process of that, I lost my father. So he won't be around to see my graphic novel be completed, which is completed. He won't be around to see if I'm lucky enough to find a good woman to have children or any of that stuff. He won't be around for the second hip surgery, which the Army also has to do. We were doing preventive measures, but I couldn't afford to take a year off because I'm not making, but like a, I was getting like maybe 120 something dollars from the Army at the time. Now they bumped me up to 263. It's not a big leap, you know, but it's better than a zero. So, you know, I can't really complain too much about that. But, you know, what else can I do? I have to do what they say because I was a soldier. That's my job. Would have helped a whole lot if the doctors at Fort Benning, Georgia would have caught this before I got discharged and I could have got full medical benefits and all that, and that didn't happen. So, you know, it's really bad. It's really bad that I have to go through these things. You know. 
and these things they they've they more affected me mentally than physically because mentally you know you're like you you you're that soldier man you can do this shit and physically your body's like nah I don't think you're gonna do that today and then you have to follow the doctor's orders so you know that kind of put a damper on the whole kung fu career thing because you know I like wushu and as many things as I've done. I get taken out by a hole at Fort Benning, Georgia. A hole in the ground, in the street. Of all things to end a career, I was expecting a bullet, friendly fire, maybe a hand grenade, maybe a mortar, maybe a claymore. No, a pothole in the street. You can't make this shit up, man. And so, you know, getting you guys up to speed is like, this is an everyday struggle. I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, I know you guys probably haven't heard that phrase, but I am. I'm honestly waiting for the other shoe to drop so they can say, oh, well, guess what, James? We found one more thing that we forgot to tell you about. You're probably going to have cancer or something. And so I'm just really waiting for the next bad news to happen before the hip surgery for the second hip to happen. You know, I'm just waiting. And you know, I found, like, some things that weren't on my body before, so maybe I do have cancer of some sort. I'm not really sure. They say they find moles that you've never, ever seen before, and I... Found a few of them, so I'm worried that I may have melanoma. And, you know, I've got a whole lot on my plate. And to top that off, you know, I can't even get my life together to where I can get a decent job, where I can get health insurance, because I can't afford to keep trying to make these trips down to McGuire because the military hospitals have to take the veterans. It's kind of one of those things that we've earned, but it's not the same as actually having health insurance and being able to go to any hospital wherever you want. So, I'm searching for a job. I'm searching for health insurance. And this wouldn't be a problem if my acting career would have just took off with that promise of Hollywood East. So, to you guys at that certain studio in Hollywood East that did not deliver, what's your problem? Your business is to make movies. It shouldn't matter if they're kung fu movies or science fiction or monster movies or anything. You know, your job is to make movies. And like I said, if I had all the resources that I need, I wouldn't have any problems. So I'm going to end this now with letting you guys know that there are some things beyond, excuse me, beyond human control. And we need to learn how to come together and fix them. And hopefully, when you decide to go into a business that is in the business of either making films or stuff like that, you will do what you say. You will honor your word and you will follow what you say. You know, whether it's a low budget, directed video, it's still making movies. Make movies. It's what you do. It's what I want to do with the rest of my life because making movies make me happy. Kung Fu movies specifically, I mean, I wanted to make Kung Fu movies so that I could teach Kung Fu for free. But again, that dream is like far and few between now. But I'll take students if they want. I just can't use my legs right now. My name is James Williams Jr. This is Comfort Athlete number two, BC and you. Hope you like the hologram and stuff. I just found this stuff, so I'm like trying to test it out. If you guys like it? Fine. If you don't, let me know so I can go back to filming things normally. I'm James Williams Jr. Comfort Athlete two, BC and you.